Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Democratic Nashville Congressman Jim Cooper. Congressman, there's been so much talk this election cycle in both parties about the anger that's out there in the country and among the electorate in particular. So when this presidential contest is over, I don't think the anger is going to go away. The, the election of a new president and a new Congress is not necessarily going to change that. So what happens? What will it take to resolve that anger and move it, if it's possible, into a positive direction? Well, you know, anger is not a bad thing. That shows real feelings and real concerns. We've got to make it constructive anger, though, so that we find solutions to America's problems. If you look at a state like Tennessee, Tennessee is generally headed in the right direction, particularly in the Nashville area. We're one of the beacons of hope and prosperity for the whole country. I have so many jealous colleagues in Washington, and I love it when they say, what are y'all doing so right in Nashville? Their kids are wanting to move to Nashville. They're wanting to move to Nashville. Pretty soon I'm going to have a couple of retired Republican colleagues. They're coming here because they're giving up on their own state and their own district because they want to retire to Nashville. That's the ultimate compliment. So the key to that is common sense, not being ideological, being fair-minded, listening to your neighbor, figuring out what the best solution is, and we're really good at that in Tennessee. Some other parts of the nation, not so much. There's been all this unhappiness about the nomination process to some degree in both parties, it being fixed and unfair. This current system that we have basically started after 1968 when the mm -hmm. Democrats had their problems both in their situation and in Chicago. Are we going to see some changes in both parties coming out of this that will change the, the nominating process? Well, the Republicans are even worried if they're going to still have a political party. So I think you're going to see fundamental change there because that's astonishing. You know, the word that President Bush Sr. and then George W. Bush would not even support Donald Trump as the nominee. That's an astonishing break with the past. Of course, Mitt Romney has already gone on record being totally against Trump. This is uh, a civil war going on in the Republican Party, so they're going to have to change their rules. The Democratic rules are actually working pretty well right now. I haven't heard any real serious complaints about those rules. They were changed. Even though the proportionality of the delegates tends to elongate the process just on its face. Well, we have longer or shorter primary seasons. I think most people are going to be glad when this is over because they're already tired of the foolishness. <laughs> and it's only May. Uh, I hope we take a break this summer before we get involved in the serious campaign and in the fall. Well, let's move to something else that some people think is foolish. Let's, let's move to Congress. Uh, they're going to be back in session. The House is next week. And I use that word House and in session in the same <laughs> word because they don't appear together very much, much this year because the House is not often in session this year. It doesn't seem, again, this year that you're meeting a whole lot, therefore not a whole lot's getting done in Washington. Well, Pat, you know politics better than anybody, and you know that the House and the Senate are controlled by the Republican Party, and right now they are not wanting to go on record on anything. That means very few votes. That means very few days at work. That means really the laziest Congress in modern history. From today through November, we're only scheduled to meet for 34 full days. That means for the year as a whole, we will have met less than the Tennessee legislature meets. And you really can't run the greatest country in the history of the world that way. But, for example, Mitch McConnell in the Senate, he has a lot of his Republican colleagues up for election. They're terrified about this trump Cruz thing. They don't know which way to go. Some of the senators have already denounced Trump. So they're afraid of going on record on any votes. That's why this year we do not have a budget. That's why this year we're not doing a lot of the fundamental things we really must be doing. And with only 34 days that you think you'll be meeting between now and November, that's going to be a problem because the federal fiscal year in September 30th, you've got to get a budget or some kind of continuing resolution passed in both houses by then. And that may not, that doesn't sound, it sounds like a long time from now, but it's really not. Only 34 days, that's a lot of uh, uh, work to be done in a very short period of time. Fortunately, our Armed Services Committee, we've already met, we've marked up our bill, it's now ready for the floor. Uh, so we are on track, but the rest of the committees of Congress have barely met, and they're really not doing their work. And in fact, I'm thinking that we shouldn't even be paid for the remainder of the year because it's, we're not doing the work that should justify a salary. I want to ask you about that because in the past you've said no budget, no pay, and I know you're still pushing that. But you were hoping the last time you were here that with a change in leadership on the Republican side with new House Speaker Paul Ryan that we'd have a different situation, a more regular order of business, and the Republicans would keep things organized enough to move these budget matters through. But he's having as much trouble as I think as his predecessor did to try to get everybody to herd these cats and get a budget passed. You're exactly right, Pat. Uh, John Boehner, the former speaker, was really surrounded by hostile forces in his own party called the Freak Freedom Caucus. And poor Paul Ryan, he didn't even want the job. And now he's even more besieged than uh, uh, John Boehner was. So it really is a terrible problem of governance. We uh, should worry in this country because not only has the Republican majority needlessly shut down our government entirely on several occasions, 
We haven't funded our military like we should. We haven't funded even our own roads and transportation system like we should. We've ducked a lot of the major problems for the nation. Paul Ryan's heart is in the right place, but a lot of his folks, his own people, are not wanting to, to follow him. Now, you've talked before, in fact, you sponsored legislation that says if budget is not passed by a certain time, Congress would lose their pay. They wouldn't get paid. There's a, the Atlantic Magazine this month has a, another article about that. It, it doesn't focus on your particular legislation. There's another one being offered by a congressman out in Iowa named David Young who wants to do something similar, but he has fewer co-sponsors than you do. Well, this seems to be an issue that remains dead in the water in Congress. Well, remember my bill did pass. It became law about three years ago, and it worked. Even the Senate that hadn't passed a bill in five years finally passed a budget once my bill was, was in because place. because of the pay cut? Well, they took my idea, and even though my colleagues hate that idea, they know it's so popular back home that they had to pass it. So it not only passed the House and Senate, it was signed into law by the President. We need to do that again. And they're not going to give me the credit because they're so partisan there, but they're taking my idea. And that's all that matters. If you have a good idea, it shouldn't matter who uh, thought it up. We just need to make it happen because America needs a budget. Any household needs a budget. And for our country not to have a budget, it's really shameful. But this year, it's likely that neither the House or the Senate will do it because they will not enforce this law against themselves. They were willing to use it as a weapon against Democrats, but they will not pick up that good idea because they know that they would be disciplined if my idea became law. But it's, it's still a good idea. In fact, I'm thinking now we should go farther than that because if we're not meeting, maybe we shouldn't get paid. National Congressman Jim Cooper is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with him on the other side of this break. Stay with us.